Welcome to Business Roundup, the show that brings you those business stories that have been trending within the week. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold, and like always, it's time for business. Petroleum Authority of Uganda has unveiled the registration process for the National Oil and Gas Supplier Database of 2019. The initiative has been put in place to achieve the country's objective of national participation in the sector, as Dennis Sigor reports. The legislation requires the Petroleum Authority to establish and publish annually a central database for persons involved in petroleum activities in Uganda. It also prohibits any entity from providing goods, works or services for oil and gas activities unless they are registered on the national database. The Petroleum Authority of Uganda plans to develop the national supply database into a centralized joint qualification and an e-marketplace where approvals for procurement documents may be made in line with the requirements of the legislation in Uganda. Uh, this is including aspects like approval of tender adverts, invitations to tender documents, and bid evaluation reports. As Uganda's oil and gas sector approaches a very important stage, the need for the potential investors to register and prepare is vital, according to the Petroleum Authority's Executive Director, Ernest Rubondo. You previously heard that the volume of work we expect is in the range of 20 billion United States dollars. If you compare that to an economy of 27 billion dollars, the economists in you will know what this means. But more importantly, we need now to break this down because it is in different projects. Uh, the Tilenga project, for instance, is estimated at four, five billion US dollars, and that is sitting in Ulisa. The Kingfisher project is sitting in a, a new district called Chikube, uh, formerly Hoima. This is estimated at between one to two billion dollars. The refinery project is estimated at three to four billion dollars. The pipeline is expected to three, at between 3.5 billion dollars. And the beauty of this, which sometimes also has challenges, is that all of these are coming at the same time. NSD first launched in July 2017 has several key objectives. Key amongst them is improving efficiency in the supply chain, achieving openness and transparency in the procurement process, and giving visibility to potential suppliers. So I think we should take this opportunity to say that the NSD is free, to any communication in respect to the NSD from the Petroleum Authority must come from the official email that we have put on our website and the communication. So we need to have so many companies register on the NSD so that we have the opportunities. We cannot complain that we do not have opportunities when in the first case we have not responded to register on the National Supply database. The NSD platform provides a medium for feedback and information dissemination to suppliers on the oil and gas sector in general. Since its inception, the NSD has enabled Ugandan businesses to formalize their systems and structures given the requirements for registration. Dennis Ikoa for UBC Business. Uganda and Tanzania have committed to strengthen their bilateral ties. This was visible at the recent Joint Permanent Commission conference held at Speak Resort Hotel in Munyonyo. On the left is Uganda's Foreign Affairs Minister Sam Kutesa handing over two land titles to Augustine Mahiga, the Foreign Affairs Minister for Tanzania. This is among the many bilaterals agreed upon by the two governments at the second Joint Permanent Commission meeting. This is a return gesture of the two properties that the United Republic of Tanzania gave to the Republic of Uganda in the city of Dar es Salaam. One comprises of a residence 
another one comprises our chancellery office. So this was a very pleasant duty on my part to hand over their titles. Uganda as well came into agreement with Tanzania in the fields of energy and education. They relate, they relate to a gas pipeline which we are thinking of working on, bringing gas from Tanzania. They talk about lake transport and trade and commerce between our two countries. The agreements bring out the fact that the two countries have different economic and political trends. Even very basic things, for example, there are Tanzanian students at the border areas that go to your schools. But at the same time, there are lots of Ugandans that go to our clinics uh, in Tanzania. So these are the give and take kind of uh, issues that, that do arise. For example, you produce more sugar than we do. And this, these are the areas of the, the give and take. And the whole balancing act and uh, harmonization and the synergy of economies and politics is part of this periodic unequal exchanges that needs to be discussed. However, the Memorandum of Understandings have set deadlines for which each country has to deliver its role, and this is where Sam Kutesa cautions the commitment to accomplish the tasks ahead. MOUs are very important undertakings to sign between nations, but they bear no fruit if the intentions and contents of those MOUs are not implemented. Uganda has time and again signed bilateral relations with many states across the globe, and there is evidence of a growing economy. However, it now remains to be seen that the East African community achieves the objective of harmonizing policies to have entirely a free East African economy. Ivan Kahua and Sandra Kahunde reporting. Uganda Development Bank will finance the primary agriculture and agro-processing in Bunyoro region. However, the investors in Bunyoro, especially farmers to benefit, have been advised to organize themselves into groups, organizations, cooperatives and unions. Bunyoro sub-region is endowed with natural resources and favorable weather conditions which offers a great opportunity for the people of Bunyoro to tackle poverty and improve their livelihoods. Uganda Development Bank can support such developmental programs. Previously it was up to 10 years, but now we can give loans up to 15 years. I don't think anybody on the market does that. Then um, the other is affordable interest rates. Cost of credit is still a bit high, um, generally in the market, but I think um, our rates are really very competitive. There is no bank that would offer, say, agricultural loans at 10% or 12%. And that is not your prime rate, but that is your um, kind of final rate. The bank can finance the development of tourist attractions and construction of modern hotels to create more jobs and improve livelihoods. This strategic investment will create a conducive working environment for thousands of locals and expatriates who will be working in the oil and gas industry in the coming days. The challenge of the price fluctuations for our agricultural products. Our farmers are very active and they are very hardworking, but when it comes to time for marketing, you find that the price has really gone down. For agriculture, the percentage for money for agriculture is bigger. Manufacturing. The reason for that is that uh, these sectors promote in a very sustainable way the development of this country. Agriculture, the main occupation of Bunyoro region, will also receive adequate financing. We've been uh, assisted by the Minister of Trade, uh, Madame Amelia Chambade. Our sugar license had been cancelled last year. She, 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 she instructed it be reinstated and we are now on the Ugandan map as one of the companies going to produce sugar. UDB is a development finance institution mandated by government to finance enterprises in key growth sectors of the economy. Dennis Igor for UBC Business. Uganda Coffee Development Authority has committed to put gravitas intervention in the Rezori region to ensure that the farmers in the ranges benefit from the coffee as much as the effort they dedicate to it. David Matovu filed this report. 
coffee growing in and around the Renzoli region has been practiced and a mode of survival for the bigger part of the population. Kase district is one of those districts that are growing coffee and for us coffee is one of the major enterprises, actually it's the biggest enterprise that we have in the district. When you move around you'll find that uh, out of the sub-counties we have, which are about 34 of them, 27 of these are involved in coffee farming. The fertile volcanic soils and the altitude advantage the region of the ability to grow and produce the aromatic Arabica coffee that is sought after internationally. The coffees we deal in Kasese here, uh, ours comes the best because we have been screening it, drying it on wire mess and uh, sort it properly. And then as you get a cup of it, you really recognize that this coffee is very sweet because of the aromas. With up to sieve size 18 and a recommendable cup taste, you would expect farmers in the region to make a grandiose harvest of their effort in coffee. Welcome to Kasese. Now this is the town. However, just like you can see in the background, on the windward side of Renzori Ranges, 80% of the population living in this area have survived and grown coffee for the last 30 years. But the poor agronomic processes and the mindset that has failed people to change is not benefiting the farmers as much. I think this is the, as a result of the fact that like you had in the meeting of people not, not appreciating what coffee is. I think very few people now in Kasese know coffee has money. That's why people still trade, uh, uh, exchange coffee for fish in Kasese. Farmers selling flowers, selling coffee when it's not yet ready, it is poverty. Druga is sold at New York price. It is good coffee, yes, but sold at New York price. There is no, there is no, there is no uh, premium that is added. Some farmers had even planted the wrong type of coffee for their land and are due to uproot acres. This will be replaced because they planted a wrong one. This is 14, and I want to move into real good robust time. Nevertheless, the region still attracts a number of investments, with many new farmers planting and harvesting on hundreds of coffee acres. Dr. Ian Clark, the proprietor of International Hospital Kampala, is one such farmer. Uh, the farm's 1,500 acres or 600 hectares, hectares, or it's about 300 acres of coffee, and it will plant out 500 acres of coffee. And then the rest of it is, you know, I have some laying hands on a... Uganda Coffee Development Authority, UCDA, is stamping their intervention in the Renzoli region. They are supporting new farmers with input, reorganizing farmer groups, and training farmers on coffee-based practices. The government is giving even free seed drinks, not only for coffee, but for tea. So we want them to diversify their incomes so that coffee is looked at as a bank, money which is set aside for maybe paying fees for the kids. During a monitoring and evaluation visit of the Uganda Coffee Development Board to the region, soil samples were taken for further analysis and the board promised to revive dilapidated infrastructure for coffee farmer groups like the new Wakumbi Farmers Group in Kabalole district. The board also checked on the progress of the coffee tissue culture development and the process by royal plants and nurseries in Chenjojo district. David Matovu for UBC. In Kasese Coffee Region. Over 800 high school students have been trained on agribusiness skills. This was at the fifth annual farm camp held at Gayaza High School. The farm camp aims at changing the younger generation's mindset about agriculture. Dennis Sigoa and Robin Yoso were there. The just concluded fifth edition of the farm camp sought to grow the interest of youth in farming, equip them with sustainable agribusiness methods for the future, besides motivating them to pass the knowledge to their communities. Paul Mwambu, a commissioner of the Ministry of Agriculture, underscored the importance of teaching the younger generation farming skills. We think that we need to take farming as a profession. Not anybody can engage in doing the things you've seen. Because you need some skills on how to do this. 
and for you to be a professional, you certainly must be guided how to do it. So to us, all these 800 young people you have here are now change agents who are going to tell others about the good practices of farming. The agricultural sector has immense job opportunities and such an initiative supported by RC Sky Project and partners showcases to the youth the various opportunities in addition to helping them develop an entrepreneurial mindset. I am going to take you through farrowing in pigs. Farrowing is the act of giving birth in pigs. The gestation period of a soy female pig is 114 days. We take a soy female pig seven days before giving birth into the farrowing house because it may give birth early or to get used to the environment. Robin Achisache, an instructor at the camp with specialization in urban farming, imparted her skills and knowledge to the youthful agripreneurs. You get this thing. You can use this or use this. Yeah. So if you're to use this, you place this just in the middle of this one that yeah. you've erected up. It is in a circle. Yes. yes. Then you fill it with stones. Mm. After doing that, you, for example, if the wire mesh uh, is around this height, you fill the, the, sur the surrounding of this pipe with soil. After filling it with soil to the level of this wire mesh, you, you need to be energetic enough to meter. pull out this thing. Eh? <laughs> so after pulling it out, yeah. your garden is like you already have a kitchen garden. Milking a cow? was one of the most difficult exercises for the learners. However, gradually, they were taken through the basics and some exiled. <laughs> it will not kick you. This is, this is the, the, the teat, okay? There are two ways of milking. One is good, one is bad, okay? This one. The good way of milking, the body of the milking is pulling like this. That's bad. Because it, it, this, it, it kills... It damages the lining of the teeth. The best of for milking is, come, do this. Okay, these are the two teeth that she has there. Okay. Can you watch, please? So you get it like this, and then you press. So you do that. That's the best way. But it takes courage. You need a little bit of energy. <laughs> the desire for white and blue collar jobs in Uganda by the youth has led to high levels of unemployment. Therefore, imparting hands on agribusiness skills to the youth is a proactive measure intended to address this challenge. Dennis Igoa and Robin Yosu for UBC Business. Ugandans must support government's developmental initiatives, says General Katumba Wamala the State Minister for Works and Transport. While on a ministerial tour and inspection of Entebbe International Airport, General Wamala raised concerns about the public pessimism surrounding the revival of the Uganda Airlines. Entebbe International Airport will soon receive a new airline flying high Uganda's national flag. However, the revival of the defunct Uganda Airlines continues to attract attention and discussion in various forms. In recent days, there has been a lot of pessimism about the planned Uganda Airlines revival. I appeal to Ugandans to really support the effort of revival of the airline. One thing I've found is that we are very fond of downplaying and also making our projects not give them support. You talk negatively about them. Nobody talks, many people don't want to talk anything positive about a Ugandan project. They prefer talking to about projects in other countries. While on a ministerial tour and inspection of Entebbe International Airport, General Katumba Wamala asked for support and appreciation of government initiatives. Currently, Entebbe International Airport is undergoing infrastructure upgrades that include rehabilitation and strengthening of the old runway, construction of a new 100,000 tons capacity cargo center, and expansion of the passenger terminal. Uh, airline travel is increasing by day, day by day, People are traveling more and more by air. Uh, this is because I think of the changing uh, economic environment, but also the tastes of Ugandans are also changing. Uh, many people prefer instead of going by on bus from here to Nairobi to take a 45-minute flight. This means that a three-year project commenced in March 2016 
and Uganda has on its part come up with the counterpart funding of approximately $250,000 per year towards implementation of the project that is expected to be fully delivered by the end of 2018. The upgrade and expansion works are set to be carried out in three phases through to the year 2034. Entebbe International Airport is expected to handle 6.1 million passengers and 172,000 tons of cargo a year by 2033. In our corporate roundup, the National Social Security Fund has this week disclosed to its members the interest rates they will earn in their savings in the financial year 2017 to 2018. In another development, the East African Development Bank has for the third consecutive year supported educators to pursue master's degrees in the science courses in the United States. In, in less than three years, the number of members has uh, gone up from 500 million to 2.2 million. That is almost uh, one four times uh, four years. So I think slowly confidence is coming back. We will add really uh, the employees and the employers to make the, the employees register uh, the basis and the purposes of the savings for the future. Uh, for those for the future, uh, as we uh, as said, who's going to take care of the project? SSF Act, first of all, when we are investing, we have got through the minister. We have gone through the Solicitor General. It is a very long process. And the investment is a very short-term business activity. They want you to respond in the next one or two days. But here, a process can take six months, can take one year. By the time it is through, the investment is lost. And we cannot participate and be competent. The eight recipients of the 2018-2019 scholarship will pursue degrees in physics education, maths education, science education, and industrial systems, and engineering in the United States, this third cohort is unique and exciting to us in many aspects. This demonstrates the available talent. Besides being citizens of the EADB member states, our scholars are university graduates, having received first class or second honors bachelor's degrees in mathematics, sciences, and engineering. The journey towards uh, getting accepted for this particular program from the time we started, uh, we applied for this particular scholarship has been a long one but enjoyable because I've gone through some experiences which I've not gone through. For example, I've done the GRE exam, which I had not done before, uh, which I actually did very well. Uh, I've gone through all the, st uh, the steps that are required and it has been a success at the end. On the international scene, Air Tanzania has launched direct flights from Entebbe International Airport to Dar es Salaam International Airport. The initiative comes on the heels of Uganda trying to revive its own airline. Tanzania's national carrier Air Tanzania Company Limited has recommenced its flight to Entebbe International Airport after 12 years of absence. President John Pombe Magufuli had promised to rejuvenate the national carrier three years ago when he came into power. The airline has been flying mainly domestically to 12 destinations and it's only, it only had one international flight to Moroni in the Comoro Islands. Since the revamp, the airline now operates a fleet of five aircrafts, including a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, and now has added Uganda as a second international destination. We had a plan to start at least making a good network, extending a network in the country, Tanzania. And then after that, we moved to East Africa. After East Africa, we moved to the region, and then we go to Intercontinental. That is our plan. Air Tanzania also has plans to launch new routes to Bunjubura in Burundi by the end of this month, to be followed by Harare, Johannesburg, Lusaka later in the year. It then will consider the Rwanda and Nairobi route. The company says that despite the new flights being launched, there are still challenges. Everything we purchase through from outside, like spare parts, we don't have... Uh, factories which are making the spare parts. Therefore, you, you need to, to import the spare parts. Fuel. Fuel is hiking every time, every hour on pricing. Also, it's, 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 it's challenging because you need to have fuel. And then the fuel is the biggest component in the airline when you're operating. 
Air Tanzania says that flights to Entebbe International Airport are now available four times a week for $363, all taxes included. And they're confident that the new route will meet the demand of East African travelers. Daniel Kijo, CGTN, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. In our sounds of business, we take you to Malaba border, one of the busiest border posts connecting Uganda to the rest of the region. When the road is bad, you expect those things to happen. You expect uh, breakdowns, uh, you expect uh, we waste a lot of times when, uh, when the road is bad. But when they finish the road and the road uh, becomes good, yeah, things become clear and they, they are good. As we wrap up this week's episode of the Business Roundup, I'll leave you with a few words of inspiration. Each new day is a blank page in the diary of your life. The secret to success is turning that diary into the best story you can possibly write. My name is Wadilo Mark Arnold. Catch me on the next episode, same time, same place. From the team and I, it's goodbye.